Ilkeston is a town in South East Derbyshire close to Derby and Nottingham. The town centre has all the usual attributes, a library, town hall, parish church and a Weatherspoons pub. Since 1882 it's also had a senior football team. The team has had a succession of names, Ilkeston Mechanics, Ilkeston Wanderers, Ilkeston Town and Ilkeston United. The club changed ownership again in November 2010 and is now called Ilkeston FC. Until 1992, the original home to Ilkeston Senior Football was here. The manor ground had been home to Ilkeston Football since 1893 and at its height was something to be proud of, despite its notorious slope and raised corners. The site was redeveloped in 1992-93. The building originally housed a supermarket before Donnell moved in to open their new store during 2003. Millionaire businessman Paul Millership had taken control of the club in 1989. He accepted that if the team was to progress, the club would have to give up the old manor ground and move to a new purpose-built ground. A new site was found but delays meant that the club stayed at the manor ground until their last match there on the 28th of March 1992, which they won 4-0. We spoke to club secretary Andrew Raisin. Andrew Raisin, hi. Hi. You're the club secretary, aren't you? I am. Um, I understand your granddad used to be the kit man for Ilkeston when they were at the original manor ground. What you... memories do you have of that? Um... My grandfather came from Cotmanay um, and as a young man um, or as a young boy he used to take me uh, to the old manor ground um, and I grew up uh, watching Elkiston play um, then possibly went away um, watching other games um, my daughter subsequently started playing football and was signed by Elkiston Ladies which uh, got me back involved um, with the old Elkiston town um, and then when Ilkeston FC was reformed, um, I was asked to be secretary and uh, I gladly accepted and I've enjoyed it ever since. Great, and as club secretary, what does the job actually involve with regards to the day-to-day -day running of the club? Um, general, general administration um, across the whole level, both teams, the academy, first team, um, there are several several leagues that we play in, um, so we obviously have to make sure that the ground's available to uh, for fixtures to be played on. We need to correspond with the leagues that we play in, uh, with the FA and Wembley, with with any discipline issues, uh, registering players, making sure we've got international clearance for any of them that have uh, played outside of uh, England, because even uh, Spain, sorry, even Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, uh, international clearance is required, um, and that can be quite a time-consuming. Um, event if you're looking to try and get somebody in for the weekend. Um, there are obviously um, sanctions imposed if you get any of it wrong. Um, so it is uh, trying to make the life manager's life easy and make sure that uh, everything's in place when the fixtures come around. Good. And given the club's history of financial problems and ownership changes, do you now feel more confident about the future of the club? Um, the, cl the club's in good hands, in very good hands. Um, it's moved forward a lot in a very short space of time. Um, with respect uh, to the way it was run previously, this is a different way of it being run. I believe it's more sustainable and there are better foundations there. Um, you're not relying just on uh, um, the golden goose so to speak, which a lot of clubs do and, th and that sort of scenario doesn't always work as many clubs have found out in recent years. We 
spoke to a couple of the players during training. Um, how long have you been playing in, at the academy? I came here for pre-season in mid-July from Bermuda where I grew up from. And then there's a Bermuda connection with Elkiston now. So they selected some players to come down and try out, try again the academy and the came was successful. And do you see yourself staying here for for some time? Yeah, if I if, it, if I do stay, I don't mind. But the ultimate goal really is to get pro leagues, just get up in the professional worlds. But if I stay, it's not a problem at all. Gary, hi. Hi, um, So, you, are you first team player? Yes. Yeah, and are you regular first team player? Yes. So. How long have you been at Ilkeston FC now? Um, the three years since they reformed as Ilkeston FC and for two years prior when there was Ilkeston Town. So five years in total. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and planning to stay for a lot longer? Well, we're going to see what the future holds, but yeah, I'm happy. Kevin Wilson is the manager. We had a chat with him. Kevin Wilson, hi, you are the manager here at Ilkeston Football Club. Um, does anything stand out as a really memorable moment of your long playing career? I think I think when you look back, uh, there's always lots of memories. Um, I know it's probably got a lot more <laughs> good ones than I have bad ones, but uh, I think you learn from every experience, really. You know, uh, making my league debut for Derby at Liverpool. Uh, there's not many players that start, you know, at uh, most probably one of the most... Uh, Crowned clubs of, of recent recent well or well, past years really and maybe uh, you know uh, winning the Premiership this year so uh, making that also making me Northern Ireland debut away in Israel um, things that come to memory and some of the clubs I play for you know Derby Ipswich Chelsea Notts County Warsaw you know all, all great clubs in their own different ways and. Uh, all, all got a different uh, way, you know, Derby and Ipswich were very friendly clubs where uh, Chelsea was a big club and must be one of the biggest in London. So, uh, you know, got great memories of all my clubs. Good, great. Um, how difficult was the period for you at the club when Ilkeston went into liquidation in the 2010-11 season? Yeah, it's difficult, it's, it's, it's hard, but, uh, you know, we battled through and I think the academy saved the club in the long, long run anyway because we kept the academy going. Uh, as you see now, that, that most of the uh, players at this football club are, you know, come through the academy. We've had 26 players come through the academy in, in just under three years, so that's a, a great achievement for everybody. Certainly. Um, and how do you think the academy has actually benefited the first team? Well, I think you know the benefit of the first team because of the amount of players that have actually come through. You know, they've played with a system that we play in the first team right from the start and I think that that shows a, a continuity in the club at the present moment that the younger players are coming through to to our first team and, and the future is about our first team. Um, have you got many first team changes planned through the summer and into next season? Well there, there will be changes, you know, we can't give away too much at the present moment but like every year there is changes, uh, the way the football club's going everybody knows the philosophy five years ago uh, well, the philosophy was a five-year plan of bringing young players through the football club. Uh, at present, we've done that, and uh, that's why it will continue and move forward. Steve Chettle is an ex-Forest player and under-18 coach who now manages the academy team. We spoke to him. Hi, Steve. Uh, what was it that made you decide to leave Nottingham Forest where you were the under-18 coach to come and work at Adilkes? Well, I knew that Darren Caskey had obviously gone on to Gateshead uh, and I'd been following the club for two seasons because Callum's been here as a player. Um, being a father, I knew how it worked. I knew how successful the academy system is here. Uh, and it was also the pull of working with the seniors with being assistant manager as well. I'd never worked with seniors. Uh, and being now a bit further down the line of my educational path regarding coaching is something I wanted to try. Uh, so I inquired to Kevin about the vacancy itself uh, and it took me, I think it was about a month to serve my notes at Forest and I came here mid-December and I thought I'd enjoy myself. How many players have you got in the academy at the moment and will this be increasing in the, in the future? We've got 40 this season 
Uh, we've got 40 scholars first and second years, plus we also work on our third year scholarship system as well, and kids going to be in teaching assistants. Uh, so we've got, I think we have 41 trained this morning. Uh, we had our open house trials in February, where we had 84 kids arrive, and we've committed to taking on, I think, 25 of those already. We've got more trials this week, uh, so there's potential for X amount of kids coming in. All we're looking for is for kids who potentially haven't been given a chance at clubs, who have been an exit route from there, uh, and we take them on because we can develop them a little bit better, a little bit more time. Uh, so yeah, there's more kids coming in, uh, and next year is another exciting time because we've got a new breed of intake coming in as well. After the presentations, we spoke to Duncan Payne, chairman of the Oakston FC supporters group. Right, Duncan Payne, hi. You're hi. Um, chairman of the supporters group here, I think. Um, how have you decided on your choice of today's Player of the Year award? It was voted for by the supporters. Uh, people had the opportunity to vote either online or by picking up forms beforehand, uh, which became available around about four weeks ago, and uh, the final votes were counted about three weeks ago. Okay, thanks. Um, how long has the supporters group been going, and were you the founder? Uh, the supporters group actually started uh, when Ilkeston Town uh, was liquidated and, and we needed to make sure that football continued down at the new manor ground. And so the supporters group was formed because at that time we thought maybe it could be a supporter run club and we bid for the, uh, to have the opportunity of running the football club but of course in the end it went to uh, Dave Mantle and SR, uh, SR Education. Um, but it was very important though that the supporters group was still in, in force and going forward so that we could work hand in hand together with the football club and also to ensure that the situation that happened to Ilkeston Town wouldn't happen to Ilkeston FC in the future. Thanks. Um, how many members do you have now and do you expect numbers to grow further? Um, I certainly think that there's a potential for the, uh, the uh, supporters group membership to rise. At the moment it's around about 200. Um, it was 185 last season, so it has increased for this season. But certainly as the club continues to progress and hopefully get promotion in the near future, um, then there's an opportunity for um, a greater fan base and therefore a greater membership number. Good. Um, I gather a planned footpath outside the ground is down to pressure from the supporters group. Do you know if it will be completed in time for next season? I haven't heard. Um, I would have certainly thought that the ideal opportunity for Derbyshire County Council to start with would be during the pre-season when uh, obviously there won't be uh, so many people around so it would be a really good time for them to do it. But unfortunately at this stage I can't confirm yet when that work will start. Okay, and are you working on any other improvements for the supporters? Uh, well, at the moment, we are doing a fundraising uh, exercise to uh, have a brand new uh, public address system put in at the new manor ground, because uh, this one's been in place really since uh, the new manor ground was formed in 1992. So it's, it's due for an update. And uh, we're, it's going to be quite a considerable amount of money that needs raising, but uh, we've made a good steady start. There's no time limit as such, uh, but we hope within a couple of years or so we'll be in a place where we can help with that. Keep, keep on following because the journey's good, because some, we've got some good young players here and good young talent. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Because I know some days they get frustrated. We all get frustrated with them, but they're, fan they're a fantastic group, and they're going somewhere. They're going forward. Experienced players have done their job around them as well because they've they've played their part. So 
keep believing in what they're trying to do. I'm glad we've got a result today because it gives us a positive start at the new manor ground for next year. Yeah. Um, we, we need to keep believing in the younger players because this is what this football club is about. Ilkeston Town now is gone. You know, I, I felt it as much as anybody, but Ilkeston Town is young, fresh and going forward. Thank you. Oh, The last five league games included three wins and a draw, and just one week later they finished the season off in style with a 2-0 victory over Glossop North End in the Derbyshire Senior Cup Final. <laughs>